Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh How is your day? Today, we are going to discuss about the stage that took place during detoxification in our liver. Now, this is our liver. Do you know that this organ exists in our body? Do you know that this organ is very vital for our survival? Yes, you should know it by now. The main function of the liver is to detoxify the substances that enter into our body. Now that you have understood the function of the liver, let's go into a more detailed information about the detoxification process in the liver. Detoxification process in the liver basically consists of two phases. The first phase is the oxidation, reduction and hydrolysis phase. The main purpose of this phase is to convert the toxin from lipophilic state to hydrophilic state in order to render it less harmful to the body. Take note, lipophilic to hydrophilic state, fat-loving to water-loving state. The chemical reactions in this phase will reduce the toxicity of the molecule that enters it, but they always need further detoxification for further reduction of the toxicity of the molecule. Therefore, they need to be passed to phase 2 for further detoxification. What is phase 2? Phase 2 is the conjugation phase. There are several mechanisms employed in this phase and one of the most versatile mechanisms is the glucuronidation pathway. Hmm, confused? Never mind, take it easy. I will explain to you the glucuronidation pathway. What is glucuronidation? Glucuronidation consists of the transfer of glucuronic acid component to a substrate which is in this case a toxin by using a type of enzyme called UDP glucuronosyl transferase. Ah, too tongue twisting? The short form of this enzyme is UGTs. Much simpler. What is the purpose of glucuronidation? In simple, the function of glucuronidation pathway is to make the product of the pathway more water soluble than the original substrate. After the addition of the glucuronic acid, the resulting product will be more water soluble than before. Let's recall what phase 1 did. In phase 1, oxidation, reduction or hydrolysis functions to modify the toxic molecule in order to make it less harmful. These modified molecules are later on transferred for further processing in phase 2. Therefore, the function of glucuronidation is to conjugate the glucuronic acid to the modified toxic molecule in order to render it even less harmful by making it more soluble in water. Ha! Huh. I kept mentioning about making the molecule more soluble in water. Why is it important to make the molecule more soluble in water? Intrigued to know? I will tell you after explaining the following example of glucuronidation pathway. One of the examples of phase 2 glucuronidation process is the conversion of benzoic acid to a derivative with glucuronic acid by the use of UGT's enzyme. As you can see, the first phase changed toluene to benzoic acid by the replacement of a methyl group with a carboxyl group. This indeed fulfilled the purpose of the first phase, which is the conversion from lipophilic molecule to hydrophilic molecule. The glucuronidation occurs from the conversion of the carboxyl group to a molecule conjugated with glucuronide. Now, can you understand the chemical reaction that took place during glucuronidation? There are many, many other examples that you can find in the journals, books, and websites on the chemical reactions during glucuronidation. The last part would be to explain why is it so important to make the toxic molecule more water-soluble? There are many explanations to this, but the most prominent explanation would be to enable easier disposal of the toxic molecule through urination and bowel actions. Ta-da! Simple, right? 
That is all for my presentation about glucuronidation. Have a nice toxic free day guys. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you enjoy the video.